it was time to pay, and suddenly he could not remember how to complete a check and sign his name, although he had done that for numerous uh, times uh, before. This may or may not be permanent. Um, the symptoms may come on quickly, and they may last for just a fleeting moments uh, to minutes to days, um, and it may or may not have uh, permanent damage. In the, re in, in the situation with my elder friend, uh, I reported the information. We got him to an emergency room quickly and uh, was able to uh, obtain treatment. There are, you may have heard of clot buster kinds of medications that are available now which actually break up the blood clot that has formed in the brain and by breaking it up it allows the blood to again flow freely to all, all parts of the brain. If it's done quickly, um, no permanent damage may occur and it can uh, help improve the individual's status and prevent months and years of rehabilitation that may occur if uh, permanent damage to a part of the brain happens. So the importance of reporting symptoms quickly so that uh, treatment can follow as rapidly as possible is extremely important to their overall success. Hypertension means high blood pressure. Blood vessel disease increases the overall blood pressure. When blood vessels are rigid and less elastic, the heart has to work harder and exert more pressure to circulate the blood. An analogy comes to mind in the home. Pipes that we have that become clogged with calcium or other mineral deposits, there may be more difficulty in moving fluids through those pipes. Uh, may need to have a plunger force fluid through it to open them up. When the work of the heart increases, the heart becomes larger. Eventually, left untreated, the heart will fail to function properly. Hypertension is particularly dangerous because it's silent. There are very few, if any, symptoms of hypertension. Therefore, it's very important that you report to a supervisor any blood pressure of a resident that you may be caring for of a pressure of 140 over 90 or higher. Many residents have some form of heart disease. When the arteries in the heart, uh, called coronary arteries, lose elasticity or become narrow due to that plaque formation that I talked about earlier, the heart muscle receives less blood and oxygen. Physical exertion, stress, smoking, and other things can cause a temporary inadequate blood and oxygen supply to the heart. When this occurs, the patient experiences chest pain called angina pectoris or angina pectoris. The treatment for angina includes measures to increase the blood supply to the affected area. This may be accomplished by use of rest and medications such as nitroglycerin that can cause the blood vessels to dilate or enlarge, thus providing for increased blood supply to the heart tissue. Sometimes it's necessary for surgical measures to uh, open up those coronary arteries. What happens is a stent is placed into the narrowed blood vessel which opens the artery and prevents it from collapsing and allowing the blood to continue to flow. Be sure that you report any complaint of chest pain immediately to your supervisor. Another disorder of the heart is called a myocardial infarction, MI, sometimes shortened to be called, or a heart attack. This is caused when there is a blockage in one of these coronary arteries of the heart. Without being able to receive oxygen and nutrients, 
the heart tissue dies. Uh, signs and symptoms include a crushing chest pain. Sometimes it spreads down the arm, particularly the left arm, or up into the neck and jaw. Sometimes the patient will experience shortness of breath, nausea, excessive sweating, or a feeling of impending doom. The treatment is designed to reverse the shock, relieve the chest pain, and keep the heart functioning as it should. Survival for these people depends on the fast medical intervention that must follow. There is a saying, time is muscle. That means that the faster that intervention happens, the more heart muscle is preserved. Report any signs and symptoms of this chest pain immediately to your sur supervisor. Congestive heart failure is another disorder of the heart itself. Sometimes it's just called CHF. It's often the final stage of many other heart conditions. A weakened heart muscle from a heart attack or a heart that has been stressed over a period of many years due to high blood pressure can cause congestive heart failure. It develops when the heart is no longer capable of meeting the oxygen and nutrient needs of the body. The heart is literally failing. Signs and symptoms of congestive heart failure include such things that, as congestion or fluid in the lungs, difficulty breathing, sometimes you can even hear a moist, rattly uh, breathing, swelling called edema of the legs and feet, and a generalized restlessness. Treatment includes such things as use of prescribed medications to remove some of this excess fluid. This medication is called diuretics. Also, there will be frequently administering administration of oxygen to make that breathing for the individual easier. Also, they may be given some sedative medication to reduce the restlessness that they're experiencing. Patients can live for many years with some amount of heart failure. Basic care includes uh, measuring fluid for intake and output, preventing that in individual from fatigue, pacing their activities, and keeping a calm environment for them. Report to your supervisor any unusual behavior or change in condition that you notice with your residents. The care given with any kind of cardiovascular disease is primarily devoted to decreasing the amount of work that the heart has to do and to observe and report any changes in condition. The activity of the patient with heart disease must be limited to what he or she is capable of doing. If the activity that they're doing causes chest pain or difficulty in breathing, the pace must be slowed. Rest periods should be planned throughout the day and activities should be scheduled around the rest periods. Too often, the needs of the, of the facility trumps the needs of the individual. It's not at all uncommon to get an individual up in the morning, have them uh, get dressed, provide for their personal hygiene, immediately have breakfast, and whisked off to some activity. That may not be possible for an individual with heart failure. Anger, frustration, and emotional upsets can also increase the workload of the heart and raise blood pressure, so providing for a calm environment is also important. Many patients with heart disease have difficulty breathing and require special positioning to help them breathe easier. Some may need to rest in a semi-sitting position supported with two and maybe even three pillows. Swelling, uh, again called edema, in the legs and feet interferes with circulation of the blood, which can lead to skin breakdown.